God absolutely loves you more than you know. Recently, uh, our church, Hillside Community Church, was uh, part of an outreach at uh, the Potato Fest where we gave out almost 4,000 walking sticks. And while we were giving out 4,000 walking sticks, it, got, uh, it gave us a chance to share how much God loves you. And so here's a summary. If you picked up one of those walking sticks or if you're interested in that, here's a summary of the story behind the walking sticks. There are five colored beads here and each one of these beads means something. I'm going to summarize the story of the entire Bible using these five colored beads. First of all, I'll get to the gold one. This gold bead represents God's love for you. God absolutely loves you. And uh, that's the summary of the entire Bible. Throughout the entire Bible, we learn that God loves us. And and I'm sure you're not surprised to hear that. Uh, We know that God is love. We read in the Bible, God is love. God loves you. You can be bad. You could be wicked. You could do really, really evil things. And God would not change his mind about you. He absolutely loves you. And and that's never going to change. Unfortunately, this dark bead reminds me that. We do evil things. We've done some pretty bad things. And some of the pretty bad things that we have done, they need to be judged. They should be judged. The, uh, the Bible teaches us in a, in a letter called Romans within the Bible, it teaches us that the wages of sin is death. What we earn for our sin is death. That's not physical death. That, that's a spiritual death. That is forever apart from God. If you and I live our life continually saying, no, thank you, God. I don't want you. I want nothing to do with you, God. Uh, thank you very much, but but I'm going to follow myself. You know, I wake up in the morning and I sort of say, self, what do you want to do? Self looks back and says, well, do whatever makes you happy, self. And we say, oh, it's a great idea. Let's do that. If we live our whole life denying God, saying, God, I don't want you part of my life, then what's going to happen at the end of our days when we face God sitting in the judgment seat, God's going to give us exactly what we wanted. If we wanted a life without him, he's going to give us an eternity without him. That's a scary place that none of us want to go to. And God doesn't want that. God doesn't want to judge anybody. God doesn't want to be angry at anybody because God loves you. And even though you've done bad things, he still has not changed his mind about you. He still hasn't changed his mind about me. He loves us. And so instead of judging us, instead of preparing to judge us, what he did is he sent Jesus to the cross. The red bead on the walking stick reminds us that God sent Jesus to the cross to pay a debt that you and I couldn't pay. If you and I paid for our sins, if you and I were to stand before God, we would be condemned And the judgment for all of the wrong things that we have done would be forever apart from God. Then God wouldn't get what he wants, and we certainly wouldn't get what what we wanted. So instead of that, we we can't pay for our, our own debt. So Jesus, who had no debt, he came, he died on the cross as a substitution. He took our place on the cross so that you and I wouldn't have to go to the cross, so that you and I wouldn't have to pay the price of our sin. And this white bead right here reminds us that with a simple faith, with me believing that Jesus died on the cross, with me placing my faith in him, saying something like, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, please forgive me. And Jesus, please teach me how to to live the rest of my life as your friend. I know I don't know what it means to live as your friend right now, so teach me what that means. Uh, Teach me what it means to love you first. Teach me what it means to love my neighbor as myself. You know, with that simple faith, believing in Jesus, what happens is this white bead reminds us that it is as though we have never done anything wrong. Our sin has been taken away. All that bad stuff that we need to be judged for completely taken away, and we have a new friendship with God. So the, the green bead on this walking staff here reminds us of that friendship and reminds us that it's a friendship that we need to grow. We need to grow the friendship. Once we have a friendship, there, there are ways to grow a friendship. And I summarize the ways to grow to the, the friendship as lounge, listen, and link. This is how you grow a friendship. You lounge with your friends. You just go to, sort of kick back and, and, you, and you talk to each other. You know, well, talking with God, we call that prayer. But prayer isn't complicated. Prayer is simply talking in your own language to God. That's all that prayer is. It's one of the ways that you grow the friendship. A listen, lounge, listen. If, if we did all the talking in a friendship and we never listened to our friends, it wouldn't be much of a friendship at all. The way we listen to God is by reading the Bible for ourselves. The Bible is, is the tool that God has used to reveal himself to us. It's, it's the revelation of God. In the Bible, we learn that God loves us. In the Bible, we learn why Jesus came to the cross. In the Bible, we learn 
what's so bad about sin and what the problem is and, and why Jesus had to pay for it and why we, why we can't. So reading the Bible is listening to God. If you've never read the Bible before, can I just encourage you to start in the New Testament and, and maybe start with a, a letter called, called Mark. And then also lounge listen and, and link if you would come to that simple faith and say, Jesus, yeah, I do believe in you. I, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. And yeah, I'm going to put my faith in you. I'm going to say, yes, Jesus, I believe in you. Please teach me to live as your friend. Well, that third L is, is link. It's now time to understand that God has become our daddy. He's our father. If you place your faith in Jesus, then God really has become our father. He's my father. He's your father. That makes us siblings, spiritual siblings, you and I are brothers and sisters. And one of the things that we do really well is, is link together so that you and I help each other to grow. And that's, that's why people go to church. You know, church isn't necessarily some religious gathering. Church is the family coming together and the family socializing and sometimes the family eating and sometimes the family praying and sometimes the family understanding the Bible a little bit better, lounge, listen, and, and link. It, it all starts, God, God absolutely loves you, loves you, and it all starts with a simple faith. It starts with saying something like, Jesus, I believe in you, please forgive me and teach me to live as your friend. And if you want to pray that prayer right now, you can. I'll lead you right now on this video, and it doesn't matter if I can hear you, it doesn't matter if somebody else can hear you, you can say this right now, and if you say this right now, you are beginning a friendship with, with God. It's not about joining a religion, it's about joining a friendship with God. So, so here we go, if you're interested, if you wanna do this, you can do it in the privacy of your own home, here it goes. Jesus, re repeat after me if you wanna do this. Pray, Jesus, I believe in you, please forgive me, and teach me to live as your friend. Amen. If that's really what you've done, if you, if you prayed that, if you said that, you have begun a friendship with God, please remember, lounge, listen, and link. God bless you.